Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone to today's CNCF webinar, Delivering Cloud Native Apps to Kubernetes Using WARF. I'm Jerry Fallon and I will be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenter today, Dmitry Stolyarov, CTO at Flamp. Just a few moments, a few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. So please do not add anything to the chat or questions that are in violation of the Code of Conduct. Please be respectful of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. And with that, I will hand it over to Dimitri for today's presentation. Thank you very much, Jerry, uh, for the uh, invitation to this uh, webinar and I'm starting. So hello, everyone. Um, um, my name is Dmitry Stolyarov and um, as you already know, I'm CTO and co-founder of Lant. Um, basically, the only thing I've done in my life <laughs> is working in uh, this company. Uh, so it was quite a nice journey and uh, it says uh, 10 years with the Linux. Actually, it's like 15 or 17 years with Linux. So um, what I've been doing during my professional life, almost all the time, it was Linux containers and everything around uh, Linux and containers. Okay, uh, and today I'm talking about uh, our open source project uh, uh, and the name, uh, the right name would be not w Werf, but V. Verf, because it's a uh, it's Dutch name uh, that came. We, actually, in Russian, we also use uh, the same name, and it's the name for the shipyard. So um, it's a Dutch word for a, a shipyard that came into Russian in 17th century, I suppose. Uh, so um, before talking um, about any details, I want to just quickly go, uh, quickly walk through about uh, what uh, Verve does and uh, basically what, what you can do with, with it and like basic principles of uh, how, um, how it is working. Um, okay, so uh, basic idea is that we have three main things um, that are interacting with each other. It's a Git repository, Kubernetes cluster and Docker registry. And uh, in Git repository, when we when we talk about Verve in Git repository, we usually have, um, it's, it's Git repository for our application. It might be one single application or it might, it might be a repository having several applications like backend and frontend uh, written in different languages. So for each application, we of course have um, source code and uh, Docker file, and um, for some application, we might have only Docker file if we, for example, want to deploy Redis as part of our as part as part of our uh, installation. And uh, also, we have a Helm chart uh, with uh, with the manifests for um, uh, for Kubernetes. And uh, what Verve does, it's kind of very simple and. Um, um, very clear thing. Uh, it just builds images, um, all images that you define in repository and it deploys manifest to Kubernetes. But um, what is important uh, is that um, if we have uh, one commit in, uh, in the Git repo having this, this state and if at some point moment we already built images for this uh, commit, Verve will not rebuild them and Verve will give you um, idempotency, um, idempotence, uh, determinism and um, uh, kind of consistency of uh, building process. So you can uh, rerun um, Verve as many times. Oh, one, one important thing that I've, <laughs> I've missed, Verve is just a CLI tool, so it's not an operator as you usually um, can 
as you usually see when, when we talk about GitOps, uh, it's a just a CLI tool that can be run, for example, from CI system or from your laptop or from anywhere. So what, what it does, it synchronizes the state of the registry to the state defined in the Git and um, uh, the state of Kubernetes to the state defined uh, in the Git. Okay, uh, so um, when um, you commit, uh, when, when we run Verf, uh, what it does, uh, it, um, it calculates uh, digests for, um, for each uh, Docker file, checks them uh, in um, Docker registry, whether they uh, exist there or not, and then uh, checks the state of Kubernetes, whether it matches it matches the manifests uh, defined in Git repository. And if something something doesn't match, uh, it just changes the state to to the state defined in the Git. It converges. I I very much like word converge. Uh, it converges the state of the doc registry to the state defined in the Git, and it converges the state of Kubernetes to the state uh, defined in the Git. So uh, if, uh, for example, some user will change um, anything in Kubernetes directly, and you can then rerun uh, Verf on the same commit, um, it might be branch or, or git tag, uh, or just uh, check out any, any random checkout commit. And if you rerun uh, Verf on the same commit, you will, um, what you will have, it's just the state restored back from from what user uh, changed, so it makes kind of kind of small fans that protects um, Kubernetes from direct changes from users, and this fans kind of motivates a user uh, to make um, uh, his changes directly, uh, not uh, not to not to make uh, changes directly to Kubernetes to make changes to the single source uh, of truth in the Git. So that's kind of a basic idea. Uh, then if we change something, for example, uh, in, in this example, we changed source code of front end. Uh, and if after that we rerun Verf, uh, it will detect that only one source code has changed. Only one of application uh, existing in repo uh, changed. Um, so it will rebuild only one image and um, uh, roll out only one of the uh, deployment. And uh, th basically same, same happens with Helm chart. If we change only Helm chart, uh, for example, only, only manifest for an uh, inverse resource, uh, there will only, uh, will only change uh, ingress resource in um, Kubernetes, but that's uh, that's merit of, of Helm, that's merit of Kubernetes API. So that's kind of, we just, we just uh, send them, uh, we just send to the Kubernetes um, manifests and, and it does, it does what, it, what, what it does. One uh, important thing is that Verve provide, provides very good feedback. So basically when you, when you run it, it says you, um, Okay, let me let me um, be clear uh, here. When you run Helm install, uh, or when you run kubectl apply, uh, both of them says you like successfully, successfully completed, successfully applied, successfully, uh, successfully finished. Uh, but uh, you know that when when Helm says you that. Um, chart is installed or when kubectl says you that file is um, applied, it doesn't mean that, that your changes were really applied. It means that, <laughs> it doesn't mean that they were rolled out. It, it only means that Kubernetes received the request for rollout. And then if, for example, new version of your application mm, is, not, is not responding well, uh, the deployment will not will not roll out new version. So uh, from these tools, from Helm and from kubectl, you usually don't have like direct feedback whether you successfully deployed, whether, whether your change, changes were 
successfully rolled out. You have only only part of feedback. So what what Verve does, and we worked on this part a lot, is um, uh, providing feedback on what's uh, what's uh, going on, what's uh, how it's how how rollout is going on, and I will show you. Uh, I will show you show you during the demo time this this part extensively. Uh, uh, so okay, uh, another thing uh, that Verve does is basically when there is a difference between like big difference between two commits. Uh, of course, it can build what 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 should be built and apply what should be applied. So you can you can uh, think of Verve as of just a thing that can uh, change Docker registry to the desired state and change Kubernetes to the desired state in one simple uh, run. Uh, and you can you can make many 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 commits, change between them, and you just check out commit. Uh, run one uh, CLI command and uh, you change Kubernetes to the desired state. Okay, uh, so uh, that's kind of a very quick uh, um, overview of of uh, what uh, what Verve does. And now I want to show you. Um, I want to quickly show you, like, to walk you through all the uh, all the. Um, steps you need to do to deploy some simple uh, some small simple application with um, uh, with Verve. and i will start with a with a very basic thing with the installation um, and um, to do this i have uh, already uh, completely clean virtual machine uh, completely clean vm the only thing i did is i've run uh, up to update uh, i've installed uh, uh, Docker, um, and I've pulled few images just to not to waste uh, just to not to waste uh, time during the presentation. So it's a completely new, uh, completely clean uh, VM with just Docker installed. And if we open uh, verve.io uh, installation, we can find that uh, I will use alpha version of 1.2. And that's because for 1.2, uh, unfortunately, uh, website says different, but for 1.2, there only uh, there is only one version that that exists. The, there is only one channel for now. It's alpha, and I want to use uh, version 1.2 because um, we switch to Helm 3, and I think it's it's kind of important change, and I don't want to to show during this uh, webinar. Um, like version that that will be kind of deprecated in a few months, so it's much more. It, it seems for me much more reasonable to show. Yes, it's uh, alpha version, but it will be uh, stable in um, at least in in early access channel. Uh, but by the way, we we deliver. I, I will tell. I, I will talk a little bit more about delivery, uh, about how we how we deliver new versions. But uh, it will be in early access in or stable in um, in a month. So. I suppose you can kind of try try it now during development, and when you will be ready for uh, deploying something to production, it might be already in stable. So first of all, you need to install dependencies, and the only dependence, uh, okay, Verve has two dependencies, Git and uh, Docker. So uh, I don't know why, but it looks like Git is pre-installed in uh, Ubuntu, and um, I've already installed Docker, and uh, the documentation for Verve suggests you to add kind of yourself to group, uh, to user group Docker to be able to run uh, Docker without any uh, any permission problems, because by default uh, you cannot do this, so the only thing I'm doing is just adding myself to the group and um, yeah I can run uh, docker uh, and that's probably the only dependency we need then um, we need to create um, a bin directory in in our home uh, of course, you can choose to any other location, but that's kind of the easiest. 
and um, and um, then um, you can use just one one liner to get not verve but multiverf. Multiverf is a tool that does um, two things. It basically checks whether a new version is released, and if it released, uh, it downloads it, and uh, then it garbage collects old versions. So it's kind of um, simple delivery tool, and it's very very convenient to use. And we recommend uh, instead of downloading like exact version, uh, uh, like for example, for now it's 1.2.0 alpha 9. Uh, instead of like the downloading one version and sticking to one version, we, we strongly recommend using Multiverf. And with Multiverf, we can use, um, uh, it's, it's, it's easier to show. Um, now I've added this line to, uh, to my uh, bash RC. Um, so, and when, when we, when we, uh, if I re-enter, uh, restart my session, you can see that uh, it just downloaded the latest version, and now I have I have like the latest version of Verve, and uh, you can you can easily switch between between different versions between different channels, and it's very convenient if you use it from CI system, so you don't have to install uh, exact version on on uh, runner on CI runner. Uh, you have to just choose 1.1 or 1.2, like minor version, uh, and then all all the bug fixes you will you will get all bug fixes uh, automatically. And we guarantee we really work a lot on backward compatibility, and we guarantee full compatibility between uh, inside uh, inside minor version. So it can be updated automatically. We we recommend updating it automatically. So that's it. Uh, we have now. Um, Verf installed. It's written in Go, so it's uh, just a single binary, uh, static binary, and um, it's it's very very easy to install. Okay, next step. Uh, we want to deploy something to Kubernetes, and to do that, we need uh, we need <laughs> this something. We need application to deploy to Kubernetes. And um, I already have some something prepared, and I will just clone it. Um, to this VM, and we'll show you what what it is. Um, okay, and um, here we have kind of the simplest possible application in uh, in Node.js. <laughs> it's only one one file, um, and uh, it's super short and super simple. And what it does, it's just serves uh, hello world when you uh, when you get uh, when you get uh, root when you access root um, so uh, and um, we also have package.json having information about uh, our dependencies um, and it's the only dependency we have is uh, Express. Express it's a um, small framework for building applications in uh, Node.js. Okay, uh, next step. Uh, the next step uh, we, we need is um, uh, actually a Docker file. We don't have Docker file. And um, I will use just prepared commits from uh, from I have I have prepared commits, uh, so I will use them and show you what's what changes um, what's what's happening. So uh, I've added two things uh, to uh, repository. One is a Docker file, and another is a verf yaml. And verf yaml uh, lives in the in the root of the repository, and Docker file lives in the in the directory with the, with the backend. And uh, what we have in the in the Docker file, it's very very basic thing. Um, sorry, I know what's happening. Uh, I've 
I've used reset uh, in Git and uh, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, a bit, a bit. Uh, okay, uh, so we have a very basic Docker file and it uses just a Node.js uh, image and it, it adds our application uh, to, to some location and it runs uh, NPM CI. Okay, and uh, what we have in, um, uh, in uh, Verf YAML, it's also a very simple thing. We have one section describing the name of the project. And um, one important thing that the name of the project should be unique uh, uh, and it shouldn't change uh, because um, based on this name, a lot of things are automatically generated like namespace or uh, the name of the Helm uh, chart or the name of the Helm release and, and so on. So you better, you better choose unique and uh, stable name. And then you can add as many, as many uh, these sections as you, as you need. Uh, for example, if you have backend and frontend, you can, you can call one image backend, another image frontend and uh, use just two different uh, Docker files. Or you can use one Docker file and um, uh, if you have named, uh, if you have multi-stage Docker file and you have named stages in this Docker file, you can, you can uh, tell Verf use this Docker file and build this stage and it will do it. Okay. And now uh, the only the only thing we need to do is to execute Verve. Uh, I will start with building, and we need to execute Verve build, but uh, we need to path. Uh, we need to uh, provide the uh, address of the Docker registry uh, that we will use uh, for storing images. And as I've already uh, told, uh, uh, it's. Um, um, it's this registry. So kind of if, if we execute their build, it converges the state of the, reg of the registry to uh, images um, defined in the, in the Git. Okay, uh, so um, I don't remember address for the registry, but I have special file with memos. So uh, uh, very, very simple and kind of straightforward command verb build, and we tell the address of the registry. What is important is that you can, okay, you can uh, have um, distributed runners and you can execute from uh, different runners verb build and it will synchronize um, itself and um, it will make everything correctly. Okay, okay. Um, during build, Verve pushes all the stages to registry. And if you run concurrently multiple, uh, multiple instances of just of, I don't know, Docker build, Docker push, they can, uh, they will be, they will be competing with each other on, on, a, on a, the, the, there might be race condition, okay? Uh, distributed race condition. Uh, so um, that's completely solved in Verve because uh, we just use um, synchronization algorithms uh, and uh, we have different implementations of, of locking of lock server. We can use Kubernetes API to synchronize multiple ins multiple instances of Verf, or we can, um, Verf has its own kind of embedded lock server and we just run publicly available version. And uh, because the only things that, that, that are sent to this server is digest. So it's nothing, nothing. Uh, there are no security problems with that. So, uh, okay. I'm executing verb build. And um, uh, explaining what's going on. First um, thing uh, that happened is that Verve um, acquired uh, a lock from our publicly available synchronization server. So you can run multiple instances. I've already told you about that. Second, uh, it created so-called Stapel uh, container. It's just uh, 
uh, internal container with uh, special tools we use during build process. And uh, staple is, um, is also a Dutch word, and it's kind of sleepway. Uh, so so when, when, you, when you build a ship, you need to you need to launch it to the to the sea so you use sleepway and uh we uh, of course <laughs> like everything around kubernetes we we usually use words from from seamanship uh, uh vocabulary okay and then because it's docker file it's just docker uh, uh standard docker output but um it's just pretty printed and uh, it shows um, that it successfully built um, um, our Docker file. And um, I don't know what's happening, but I suppose it's just um, Docker push. Like always, when 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 you do online online demo, <laughs> something happening. Okay, that's really scary, but we can use verbose mode. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's my registry uh, that is not very fast. Why? It's not very fast. Oh, la, la. Sorry. Um, and I'm, oh, uh, everything went well. Uh, so, it it built it uh, it built and uh, pushed uh, the the reason for for that is that not js image i'm using i don't know why i'm using such a large image but it's like 900 um, megabytes and um, it's just our uh, diy openstack that we use uh, only for uh, development so it, it has its uh, little problems uh, okay uh, so um what we have now is an um, image that is built and pushed in registry. And uh, it was tagged, and for tag we use such a long string, but that's basically a digest of the, of the source code and all the things you've, you have used in the, in the uh, Docker file. And it's a, it's a digest that is stable across multiple runners. I will show you this just in a moment and we can rerun this command as many times as we as we want and we after it successfully built image once it will not change anything because nothing uh, has changed in uh, source code okay uh, from this moment i will switch to another vm uh, having uh, this same uh, uh, sorry, uh, having this same uh, repository uh, with uh, with my commits, and uh, um, and I will use the same commit but on another virtual machine uh, um, show you that um, show you that. Um, I can run the same command um, from multiple uh, VMs and it will give the same uh, result. So as you can see, uh, the tag uh, is same, 472A, um, 472A, and it uh, ends with 9274, 9274. Yeah, that's the same. And we can run as many times as, as we want uh, this command. And, uh, whoa. Uh, and uh, <laughs> now it's running garbage collect uh, because on the other VM, I've already, I've already 
have been using there for some time and it use it utilizes a lot of it, it generates a lot of cash but it garbage collects it uh, so it's it's kind of built to run from from ci so when when you run something from ci you need time to time to run garbage collect to to just uh, collect but we can we can do it as many times as we want at it and it will be doing it always correctly okay uh, next step we want to deploy this app to kubernetes and um, on the second VM, I already have uh, I already have kubectl, and I already have access to some uh, Kubernetes cluster. And um, um, I will switch to next uh, commit and show you what we have in Helm. Hard. Okay, uh, so what what was added to the repository? Um, maybe this, oh no, that's not, yeah, uh, Helm. Uh, so basically uh, the only thing that was, uh, was added to the, um, uh, to the repository to, with the new commit was a, a directory with a Helm template, so it's it's called dot Helm, uh, and um, you can change this name to another by by de by, de by default verfuse dot Helm, and it's simplified um, chart. It's simplified uh, Helm chart, uh, so we have uh, values YAML with only one with only one uh, value. It's like is the back. With a with a with a true value, and um, uh, in templates we have mm, uh, directory with backend, and here we have deployment, service, and uh, ingress. Uh, let's just very quickly walk through them. Uh, so, name nothing interesting. It's just basic deployment uh, select or nothing interesting nothing interesting what what's what's interesting is an um, image so um, we use just special template that returns um, name of the docker registry we used and a tag that verve calculated and generated um, yeah that's that's basically like the most uh, the most important um, um, the most important part uh, in ingress we have just basic definition for ingress we use nginx ingress so it's uh, it's uh, it's for nginx and um, mm, uh, in uh, services just basic basic de declaration of, of uh, service that points to our deployment okay uh, what can we do with this? Um, we can use command uh, that is named converge. And um, most of the time you need to pass uh, two or three arguments to converge. One is uh, the same as uh, for build, uh, the address of the Docker registry. Another is um, name of your environment it might be staging test and production and so on and the third one that i i'm not using is kube config if you if you if you need to um, if your kube config is not in standard location uh you you need to path uh, uh where, where, where it resides okay so verve converge and I press enter and what's happening is first of all uh, it builds images but it, because I've already uh, executed verb build it has nothing to build so it uh, goes to the next step and it um, converges Kubernetes to desired state but basically verb has a helm compiled in with a small additions and um, like the largest the largest uh, what we we've changed in Helm is uh, the way how we how we show feedback. As you can see here, um, it says release with the name Verve demo 
staging and verve demo is the name of our our project from from uh, yaml file from verve yaml file and uh, staging is um, uh, is because i passed uh, minus minus and staging uh, to the uh, to the command okay uh, i'm um, increasing the speed and <laughs> starting talking less because it's only 20 minutes left um, so as you can see it says waiting for release resource to become ready um, let me let me uh, let me just quickly um, change uh, something in helm i will show you what uh what we will change um, so what we are changing is we are introducing uh, uh the first version deployed on the on the domain uh example com and of course we don't own example com i don't know who owns and uh, probably it's just recommended by rfc uh, domain to use in examples but um uh, so of course it's it's it will not work uh, but um uh now we can we use we use uh, values we use helm values uh, to get uh, to read uh, host name from so um kubectl uh, namespace verb demo staging get ingress uh, and it says example com and um, if i um, use a command like that passing um, with a minus minus set app dot host name with the value with some really long host name uh, what will happen is uh, now our ingress is configured for the right domain so we can uh, we can uh, try to access it and uh, yeah it it shows hello world so our application is running okay uh, next step um, next step and next step would be very easy we don't want uh, to pass um, this param each time so we use values yaml and we have uh, value for staging and for production uh, so um, and different we use different host names for staging for production so now i don't need to pass this uh, this um, param and i also can can create uh, uh, another environment uh, just by using just by using uh, by passing another argument and um, uh, so what will happen is uh, we have we will have another namespace so now we have two one for staging one one for production okay uh what uh next what next uh okay i know what next what next uh i want to change my application and to do it uh what i can do is just modify app.js and say uh, instead of hello world, say, uh, for example, hey, hey world, mm, that's, um, uh, and um, um, I make a commit with that. And if I now run verve converge, the same, the same command, um, the same uh, command that we already used first to staging uh, staging uh, so of course what we will have is new image is built and it takes some time as you can see because it's um, it's 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 rebuilding docker file from from the beginning and uh, then it will be pushed to registry and then uh, changes will be applied to kubernetes so now, yeah, it's done. So, uh, and you can show, uh, you can see that Verve shows, uh, says that one pod is terminating, another one is 
already running and we can use uh, we can we can uh, check that yeah we have we have new text from our backend okay um, one more uh, important thing from Verve. Um, Uh, instead of using docker file uh, you can use our um, our own builder uh, that is called stapel but what is what is very very good uh, is that um, it has very very powerful integration with git uh, I will show you just just one example uh, so what what we uh, in previous example, we had only only three lines here with the image. Uh, it's better. It's better to show. Uh, it's better to show uh, changes from the Git. So uh, image name same. Uh, Docker file and context removed and added from. It's the same as a Docker from Git is smart integration with Git. I will show you what 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 I mean by smart, and um, it basically adds uh, slash backend to slash app, and uh, mm, I will not go into the details. But what is important is when package.json changes, it will re-execute npm CI. But if uh, package.json hasn't changed, npm CI will not be uh, re-executed. Okay, uh, I run Verve Converge. It will take some time to build it once again because it's not uh, it's not built. We switch uh, we switched builder from Docker file to Stapel, so it's it needs some time to uh, rebuild it again. Um, we better wait uh, just a few uh, seconds. Uh, and it says image is built. But then what's, what's really beautiful is that when we uh, change our app.js once again, uh, oh, it, it, <laughs> uh, it's uh, hello world again because I use git uh, reset. Uh, so, uh, but we will change it to, it to hello comma world and now when we run verve converge you can you can see that image is built in oh sorry um that's too fast because i haven't committed it um uh, sam comma um so the only thing that uh, was done is a verb calculated div from previous commit to current and then used previously built image and only apply patch. So that's kind of powerful integration with Git that, that I call. If you if you want to read more details, I will show you where can you where you can get them. Okay, uh, I just want to show one one important thing. Uh, if I add uh, readiness prob, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. And um, I've made a mistake, and um, my container is listening on uh, the port on on port with number three thousand, and I'm checking three thousand one. So uh, of course it will not work, but uh, um, what's uh, what's important is that if we run Verve Converge, it will uh, go through image building part fastly, and then it will um, it will not exit. It will show you the progress, and um, it will tell waiting for replicas. Uh, it's it's a bit strange. It it waits while <laughs> uh, it will be one ready replica, and now it's two replicas. Old one is ready, is still ready, and new one is not ready because uh, the the lineless uh, prob is wrong. 
I can go to next commit and um, and um, uh, what this commit does uh, is it adds another uh, container to our deployment uh, noisy si sidecar and it's just uh, it just logs some log each each second and if we uh, if you if we try to converge this comment uh, what we will have is um, uh, you will just uh, you will you will see in just a moment uh, uh, so uh, you can see that uh, verf outputs log messages from from containers during uh, waiting uh, waiting phase and uh, you can um, you can control uh, how much of these uh, logs you receive uh, by different annotations. Mm, for example, you can use skip logs to completely disable um, log printing on, or you can skip logs from several uh, containers uh, in, a, in a pod, or you can show logs for only from some containers. You can basically filter by regular expressions and so on. And also, um, um, you can define how Verve will, will track failure mode. Uh, for example, by default, we allow some amount of failures per replica. And uh, Verve will wait while, you know, um, while your application will be deployed. Okay, and... Um, um, the last uh, commit I have, uh, which I will uh, show you today, is uh, just um, uh, just uh, this one, and um, uh, what it does is just fixes the port for uh, for a readiness prop. And now, if you if we use verve converge, it will it will finish successfully. This time it should finish successfully. Um, yeah, and it's successfully, uh, it's successfully finished. Okay, um, it's only eight minutes left, uh, so I probably will go to presentation and make some final, um, final notes quickly, and then uh, if we will have time, we'll uh, go through questions if there are any. So uh, what's next? Um, uh, this demo project that I've used will be published just in a few minutes after after this presentation on the on the shown on the link uh, shown. So it's GitHub, uh, Verf, and uh, the repository name will be demo and today's date. Uh, we have a very good quick start with more comprehensive project, uh, so you can uh, try it. We also have um, um, a lot of information about how you can use Verve from CI, and you can start with uh, using with CI CD systems. So if you open uh, verve.io uh, documentation, you can find using with CI CD systems, and that's um, kind of basic generic information. But if you want to go deeper, uh, uh, you can open advanced, uh, CICD and then CICD workflow basic and you can find uh, different approaches that you can use with GitLab or GitHub or any other uh, CI system with Verf uh, to make it really effective and, uh, and efficient uh, and different approaches how you can uh, deliver things. Uh, okay, um, we have also very comprehensive uh, guides, but for now only in Russian, <laughs> but they, they are under translation. Uh, sorry, it's, it's really hard for us, for all my colleagues to fluently write in English for now. We are, we are learning English, but <laughs> we need some time. So uh, some of things are written in Russian, so, but as far as we know, you can use Google Translate <laughs> and to try, but probably in a month uh, it will be in English. Okay, uh, I'm going very quick. Uh, where to ask questions? We have um, 
discourse server uh, and basically uh, this right uh, button uh, will lead you to the uh, community.flam.com. We just launched it and we'll, we will be very happy to answer any questions there. Uh, oh, it should say, uh, <laughs> uh, it should be, do we need help? Yes. And uh, if you can uh, proofread the documentation, if you will be trying uh, Verve and you will, and if you will find, you will find uh, some mistakes, please send a PR. Uh, it, it, it would be beautiful. Um, one important thing about GitOps, uh, Verve site, website says uh, GitOps, done another way. Uh, I have a not yet published video uh, about what we think about GitOps and uh, like our approach to GitOps. And the link is in, uh, you can see it on the slide. Um, and please subscribe. It's our actually first video in English. So we will be very happy if you subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for, uh, for your attention. Thank you very much for your time. If you if you would like, if you will like Verve, please don't forget to start. And Jerry, I'm I'm finished. I'm sorry, it's uh, four minutes till the end. Not a problem. Not a problem, Dimitri. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, we have a few minutes for questions now. So if anyone has any questions, please just drop them into the Q and A box, and we'll get to as many as we can. Do we have any? <laughs> Uh, at the moment, no, but so if anyone, if you guys have any questions at all, um, please feel free to drop them in. Uh, while we are waiting for questions, um, um, I can just quickly walk through um, what we have in the documentation. Uh, so. Uh, it's like overview shows basically what I've already shown you in presentation. Uh, introduction is just, um, uh, oh, sorry, introduction is what I've shown you in the presentation. Overview is just how, how documentation is structured. Uh, quick start is, um, is a quick start. <laughs> it's, it, it quickly walks you through um, basic steps you need to do to try Verve and um, using with CI CD systems, we have uh, we have um, uh, two integrations with um, with a GitLab and GitHub, um, and you can use this guide to to adapt Verve to your own CI system. It might be anything like Circle CI, Jenkins, whatever. Um, what else? Um, there are some limitations on using uh, on using um, registry because uh, oh uh, I've uh, skipped this part. Uh, Verve has a comprehensive cleaning um, uh, things things to clean. Um, Jerry, I, I see that I, I see some some message in there. Uh, okay, um, so uh, we have. Um, a list of supported registries because Verve has cleaning um, Verve has part that can clean registry uh, based on the state of the Kubernetes and state of the Git. So if we know that this image is not used in uh, uh, in Kubernetes and uh, according to Git history, it was it, it's it's very far. We, we clean it in the doc registry. And because we use delete, we are deleting images from registry. This part is, um, is not uh, implemented in the same way between all the registries. So we have some limitations, but we've done a lot of work to support as many as we can. So basically like all major, major uh, uh, registry, doc registry implementations are supported. Uh, Jerry, do we have any, any questions? Uh, no, we do not. Okay, I I would uh, I will think that uh, I I've done a good presentation and answered all questions. <laughs> I think so, <laughs> I, I, I think so as well, my friend. 
Well, that, that, uh, well, that being said, that will wrap up today's presentation. Uh, Dimitri, I want to thank you again for your time and for the wonderful presentation and for everyone who joined us today. We'll see you at the next CNCF webinar. Everyone, take care, stay safe, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.